What's going on today we are outside of this awesome condo i did a video on tiktok that went crazy viral i think it's at like 18 million views we're going up to the penthouse to tour and interview fias otherwise known as ceo 10x this place will blow your mind we're going to find out how we got it how we built his success and everything in between while we see this crazy penthouse the elevator opens right into his unit i've never been anywhere like that before I do not like elevators. They're terrifying. Ever since we had that place in Miami, not a big fan. Oh yeah, here we are. So here we are. I want to say right away, thank you for inviting me back to your crazy house here. No problem. Welcome back. Yeah, it's incredible yeah. here. Do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us, you know, your name, your occupation for those who haven't seen the TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm Fiaz. I am a options trader. I'm an investor. I'm a tech entrepreneur. Tell me a little bit more about option trading. So I'm gonna try to beat off some of the comments that were on that viral video. Right. A lot of people were curious what option trading is. And to be honest with you, I'm not really even 100% sure what it is. It's an option contract. It's a financial derivative that allows you to make bets on the movement of a certain security. And so the options I trade are options on, on stocks. Mm -hmm. And so uh, an option allows you to lever up your capital and make larger and larger bets. Leverage is dangerous, so use, you, you, I use it responsibly, okay. uh, but options let you do that. Fair, okay, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a little bit, I, I get the concept of it, but right. there's probably so many ways you can go with like option trading, so it's yeah. hard to cover all there's, I mean, there's, there's a million different ways to trade options. Some are smarter than others, mm -hmm. uh, and, but there's also ways to hedge your risk mm -hmm. uh, and to make calculated, uh, risk adjusted decisions and do things the right way. I've been, I've been doing it for a very long time. I'm really good at identifying value, mm -hmm. uh, identifying uh, areas of the market where there's discrepancies, uh, where there's a, some sort of imbalance between cost and value and I can kind of dig into that. Yeah. You ever seen something as soon as you see it, you're like, I gotta buy this? Yes, yeah. unfortunately I haven't. This is a little bit of my passport <laughs> at this point, but yes, I know what you're talking about. How it works is you have these, uh, these tokens that I keep here. Yeah. And you grab one of these tokens and um, they're, they're oh kind of custom. Oh my God, is that, your, is that your handle on there? And yeah, my Instagram handle's on the token. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, oh my right? Oh God. And you just, uh, you just put it in and uh, you choose what you want. The stuff that I do, there's no secret sauce here, right? Like I don't have some answer to where I can say a few things and like, boom, you're gonna be rich because now you're an options trader, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's a lot of research, it's a lot of due diligence. I don't trade other people's money. People ask me, hey, can I write your check? Can you trade for me? No, I don't trade other people's money. I don't teach people how to trade. It's one of the, a lot of these questions came from that TikTok. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, just, it's just not what I do. I'm very uh, systematic and procedural with my approach and my yeah. process and I don't deviate from it. So do we, maybe we could touch on the fact like, you know, I saw you talking about it online after, you know, you got a bunch of followers on Instagram. Yeah. There were some fake accounts made for you. Right. And I even had some people DM me, be, you know, asking, hey, is this so-and-so? And I'm yeah. like, no, man, like the, you, you've clearly tagged right. just appropriately. Right. But those fake accounts, they were trying to get like money from people. They yeah. were trying to... The, there's still like seven or eight of them, right? Wow. And they take my profile picture, all my pictures, they buy a bunch of followers so it looks real. Yeah. And even the Instagram handle looks like it's mine. It's just kind of off by like a letter or a number or like a yeah. character that they put before or after. Uh, but the whole idea is, you know, these guys follow people that follow me and then they act like, uh, you know, uh, that, I mean, and they essentially try to scam people into doing some crypto deals with them. Weird. But you know, I don't do crypto. Yeah. Uh, nor do I DM people I don't know, yeah. ever. Yeah. Uh, so if you find me in your DMs, it's not me. Yeah, there it's you someone go. pretending <laughs> to be me. Don't give them any money. I don't yeah. talk to people I don't know. And even the people I do know, uh, I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not selling courses. I'm not, yeah. I don't take investment capital. These are scammers. Uh, tell me about your uh, full-time security guard. Here. <laughs> this is Gilbert. Gilbert. He's a piece of art. It's uh, he's a hyper-realistic sculpture made out of wax by an artist named Mark Sijin. 
And uh, yeah, so that's what, this is what the artist does. He makes these super realistic looking sculptures. And this is actually modeled after his father. His own father? Yeah. Is his father still alive? No, his father oh, passed away. That's a little creepy, His father man. passed away and he, <laughs> like, he built sculptures of his dad. Yeah. But it's creepy, but you can kind of see like the passion and the love that he puts into it. Yeah, yeah I hear yeah. you there. I feel like I have like, I'm just really f good at it. <laughs> and so, like, as soon as I started, uh, you know, I had a string of wins. Yeah. And then I was hooked, yeah. you know. And then, yeah, I've had I've had my my share of uh, of losses too. But uh, but I just I you know, I just I just honed my craft. Mm -hmm. um, and the more I did it, the more I fell in love with capital allocation and trading and mm -hmm. investing specifically in the public equity markets. Wow. What drove you to get to this point? I mean, you know, you say when you started making money, but like mm -hmm. you've made a lot here. Like you you keep you keep going is it that drive you know you like to win what is it uh, i'm a very competitive guy okay um and, and in the in the market there's a uh there's a concept called alpha uh which is your return over what the market return is for that period of time right what the what the index returned and that delta uh you know the higher your return is compared to the higher the market return and that's your alpha mm -hmm. and it's almost like a scorecard right like that's how you know if you're winning or you're losing is there any chance that you could show us inside of this today? Zero chance, not today. Let's keep going. Let's <laughs> oh keep going. God. Uh, this is worth a try. <laughs> are you able to beat the market? And if you are, to what extent? And so every day, it's 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 like this really exciting game. <laughs> get, yeah. Just trying to get way up. Right. Wow. There's a Japanese term called kaizen, and it's, it means continuous improvement. You know, it's core value of kind of how I operate. I'm always trying to improve myself physically, financially, you know, like, like in every way, shape and form, I want to just be better than I was before. Mm -hmm. And wow. is yeah. that ever exhausting? I would, I wouldn't wish it on some people. It's uh, it, the, the drive, the drive to constantly move forward and push forward and progress could be a hindrance to happiness sometimes. Yeah right because it's hard to stay content mm -hmm. it's hard to be in the moment you're always thinking ahead mm -hmm. but it's just the way i'm wired and i can't change it this is the closet Whew. so just where i get ready where you get ready no simple no big <laughs> deal gorgeous that's also new yeah yeah, yeah. able to pick out the things that are new in here yeah <laughs> what is something that you will freely splurge on and um, then what's something that you'd be very cheap with i splurge on travel quite a bit you know, I I stopped flying commercial a couple of years ago, uh, a few years ago. So you have a private jet. I, I don't own my charter planes. Your charter planes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think wow. I think there's a saying it goes never buy anything that flies, floats, or fucks, is what they say. <laughs> so what do you feel like you are frugal with, if anything? Uh, Dunkin' Donuts over Starbucks. Uh, I feel like it's <laughs> half the price and it's better coffee. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> what are some tips or advice you could give to somebody that's looking to get into options? Um, if, if you're looking to get into investing in general, it takes patience. Money is built over time um, and you execute strategies uh, to mitigate your downside risk in case you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and at some point you get out, but you can't be emotional about it. Uh, you can't let it stress you out. You can't make rash decisions. And so a lot of it is, you know, it's a game of mental equity. You have to be, you have to be stable and balanced. I go to the range a lot. I shoot a lot. So yeah. um, I had this extra room. I want to do something really interesting to it. Mm -hmm. And everything here is kind of built after my passion. You can always make money, but you can't make time, no. right? So once, once, once that passes, it passes. And so um, you, you really, if, if you're unhappy in life, if you feel that you're unsuccessful in life, you have to turn that around quickly. What is your definition of success? It's being happy, I would say. You can't measure a man's success. You have to find a common denominator. And I feel like if you, if you, if you look for what is the common denominator of what everybody is trying to do, you find that everybody's just trying to be happy. Yeah. So that's probably the best measurement for success that you can do if you're looking at it from a comparative perspective. Yeah. And I think something that anybody who is doing this should be very careful of is leverage. Uh, trading outside of your account size uh, with borrowed money. This is a slow and steady game. It's, uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. What I would tell people is do your research, build wealth 
on a long-term perspective. Uh, so I want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, Thanks for coming. Man, this place is spectacular and I, I really hope that the audience learned yeah. something. I definitely did and yeah. uh, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. And yeah. tell me about these light fixtures because I feel a lot of people <laughs> have comments about them. So they are light fixtures. They are right? light fixtures. They are not swings. <laughs> They're not ropes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I them. Wow. I'm kidding. As I'm and sitting right here. Literally, as I went to report them, they went from 10,000 to 11,000 followers. Big thank you to Fiaz for inviting us back to his incredible and viral penthouse. That place is remarkable. If you're not familiar with this channel, I release videos like this one every single week with successful entrepreneurs, business people, and we tour their incredible mansions, penthouses, businesses. My name's Aaron Van Campen. I ask the questions you want the answers to. Smash that subscribe button and I'll see you next week.